Well, I want to do some thinking now about genetics. The study of inheritance. How do we inherit things from our parents? Well, you probably know that in your body cells, there's going to be a cell membrane, a cytoplasm, and in the center of that, there's going to be a nucleus. So there's a nucleus in the center of all of your body cells. And if you examine the nucleus under greater detail at certain times of the cell cycle, you can see small different sized bodies within that nucleus. Now, most of the time you can't see these, but at certain stages in the cell division process, the nucleus develops what's called mitotic figures and we can see them. So what is this we're looking at? These are chromosomes. Now chromo means coloured. So the chromosomes, chromo is colour. So the chromosomes are coloured bodies seen in the nucleus of the cell at certain stages of cell division. Now they're always there, it's just that very often they're in a form where you can't see them. So the coloured bodies. And if we count these chromosomes up, we find that in a normal body cell, in the nucleus of a normal body cell, there are always 46 of these chromosomes. And actually, the 46 are in 23 pairs. So most of them are in pairs that look the same. Now the question in genetics, of course, is where did this body cell come from? Well, all of your body cells derived from one of these from your dad, one of these spermatozoa or these sperm cells, one of those sperm cells. Now, the sperm cell really has got three components. Some of the smallest cells in the body are the sp sperm cells. In fact, I can't think of a smaller one offhand. They're very small cells and they're made of three components. So the first is the head containing the nucleus. And then the next bit here, this neck, this contains uh, mitochondria to supply the energy for the motility of the tail section that wags around to let it swim. And men perhaps produce a hundred million of these a day. Depends how often you use them, but these are produced in huge amounts, maybe a hundred million a day. And a single ejaculation can contain significantly more than a hundred million sperm. And to get a new life, we need to combine this with one of the largest cells in the body, the female ovum. Here we have the female ovum. And the key thing is that the sperm cells contain 23 chromosomes and the ovum. So that's the sperm. This is the ovum. 23 chromosomes from the sperm, 23 chromosomes from the ovum. But of course, it's not just any 23. It's one chromosome from each pair. And likewise, the mother provides, your mother provides you with one chromosome from each pair. So it's not hard to see that the 23 plus the 23 goes to form one new cell, which contains 23 pairs plus 23 pairs. So this newly formed cell will contain 46 chromosomes again. And this single newly formed cell is called a zygote. So a zygote is the fertilized egg cell. 23 chromosomes from your dad, 23 chromosomes from your mum gives you 46 chromosomes. But actually, can you see that the cytoplasm in the sperm cell is pretty small. 
most of the sperm cell is taken up, or the head of the sperm cell is taken up with the nucleus. And if we drew this to scale, the sperm cells are going to be absolutely tiny compared to the size of the ovum. So when the sperm fertilizes the ovum, one of these sperms will be allowed in, just the head will come in. That will progress and fuse with the nucleus, giving rise to the new life with 46 chromosomes. But can you see what this means is the dad is not contributing cytoplasm to the new formed zygote. And this is fascinating because in the cytoplasm of all cells, here for example, we would have chromosomes. No, sorry, not chromosomes. We would have mitochondria. Still thinking about chromosomes. Now, if it's a muscle cell or a liver cell, that's going to be packed with mitochondria because it's the mitochondria that produce the energy. And the mitochondria also have a little bit of their own DNA. Now, mitochondria get most of their genetic instructions actually from the nuclear material in the chromosome, but they have a few of their own genes as well. So in the cytoplasm of this zygote, there's going to be mitochondria. Not drawn to scale, of course. But because the sperm is not contributing cytoplasm, the sperm is not contributing mitochondria. So that means if we think about the zygote here, the fertilized cell, the chromosomes in that all come from the ovum. They're all maternal. Did I say chromosomes again? I meant mitochondria. All the mitochondria from that in the zygote come from the ovum. So that means that in a zygote, there's 23 chromosomes from mum, 23 chromosomes from dad, but all of the small amount of DNA, but an interesting amount of DNA in the mitochondria is all from the mother. And then of course, this cell will divide into two That'll divide into two. That will divide into four. And this will carry on into eight. And from that, a new fetus and then child will, will form. But all the mitochondria are going to be from the mum. So the mitochondria you have, whether you're male or female, are all your mums. And of course she got hers from her mum. So the mitochondria go back down through the female line, giving amazing opportunities for geneticists to study these things. Now the 46 chromosomes there has got to divide. Now how many chromosomes is there going to be in each of these daughter cells? And by the way, we call these cells daughter cells, whether they come from the, whether you're a male or a female. Well, there's 46 chromosomes in that, and these all need 46 chromosomes. Because when you think about it, getting back to the original body cell that we started considering when we asked this question, that contains 46 chromosomes. So the cell division here needs to conserve the number of chromosomes. And that conservation cell division is called mitosis. The number of chromosomes is conserved from here to here, to here, to here, to the multi-cell stage, to all the cells in your body. So all the 75 trillion cells or so in your body, depending on which book you read, how many cells you've got, all of those are going to contain the 46 chromosomes from the zygote by this process of mitosis, conservation cell division. And they will contain all the mitochondria and the mitochondrial DNA only from your mother. Now, if you're a female, you have the chance to pass on your mitochondria to the next generation. And if you have daughters, they can pass that on to the generation after that. If you're a male, then unfortunately you can't pass your mitochondrial DNA onto your children. 
only your nuclear DNA. So we end up with a whole body here because this is going to keep dividing and dividing until we've got the whole body. Here we have the whole body. And at one point it's going to be time to reproduce. So to reproduce, we need to make cells that contain 23 chromosomes again. But the somatic cells, the cells in the body, contain 46. So we need a type of cell division that takes place in the ovaries and testes that takes the 46 chromosomes and reduces that to 23 again. And that's meiosis. The form of cell division called meiosis. Producing new ovum if you're a female, producing new sperm if you're a, a man. The woman, of course, only produces one ovum a month for the period of time from when she starts a period up, up to the menopause. And uh, the potential ovum are already formed in the baby girl's ovaries. Uh, they're there from, the, from fetal life, in fact, in a semi-formed state. So a fairly limited number of ovum produced, maybe just one a month over, well, if someone starts their periods when they're, say, 12, up until the menopause at, say, 50, 52, you can work out how many months that is. Not that many. Of course, the vast majority of the ovum that the baby girl is born with will never develop into fully mature ovum. But dad produces huge amounts of sperm on a daily basis. But there we have the whole life cycle. The whole life cycle. We've gone from the initial cell with the 46 chromosomes that we can see there. We've seen that these come from the sperm and the egg going to the zygote, proliferating, differentiating to form the whole body, giving rise to the next generation. So in essence, that is my understanding of the facts of life, the basis of human, indeed all, uh, higher animal reproduction. Now that's just the first talk on genetics. That one's fairly straightforward and we'll probably get a little more technical as we go into the subsequent talks.